Uh, my name is Yang Yang. I'm a professor from UCLA, which is not far away from San Diego. And uh, uh, my Chinese name is actually different. Even my American name looks identical in the first name and last name. My Chinese name, Chinese name is Sun or Sunshine, which probably suggests my, my father that uh, he wants me to do solar research. So let's, uh, we, we at UCLA have been there for uh, 18 years. My group work on a variety of solar cells. So it start from about 15 years ago, we work on organic materials. The still uh, one of our major uh, research topic is using organic compound, polymer, plastic for that. However, the efficiency has been moved from a single digit to about 11, 12%. And then it has been slowly uh, saturated. We need another breakthrough in material design to reach even higher efficiency. That's the uh, organic version. So we, about one third of member are working on that. The other uh, one third, 30 percent or 40 percent of efforts on proboscide solar cell, and the other 30, 40 percent of the other 30 percent of effort in our group is around uh, using um, uh, uh, metal oxide for transistor, for biosensing, and uh, for other applications. Uh, proboscide is really amazing material from a pure scientific point of view. Uh, currently, um, the material um, can be processed by solution by liquid. So on the other hand, it could be coat in the large area and then uh, fabricate, you know, continuously solar cells. But what makes the material so unique is that it's, despite that it's very low cost and very easy to process, it has probably the most demanding uh, material property uh, for solar cells. First is highly absorption, uh, so we need to pick up the photons, pick up the light from the sun. And then it's good transport probably for the charge carriers. Electrons and holes move quite freely in the material with good lifetime. And then as well as um, the, all these properties can be actually processed relatively low cost. So compared to a lot of high-end solar cells like a Galinas, that they require special equipment and a higher cost. So in our case, uh, if the technology can prove long-term stability in the future, then this material can really lower the cost of the solar cell to uh, uh, comparable or even lower than the fossil fuels. The solar cell efficiency is determined by three parameters. It's, you can think about it as a bucket of, 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 of uh, uh, collect the rain, and then the, there's a faucet. You open the faucet. So you can have collect a bucket of water, and then the water you open the little faucet, and then you, you're dripping slowly. So you get a height, which is represent the voltage but you don't get a current. Alternatively, you can crank on the, the, the faucet, you get a lot of current, and then the, wa the water dissipates quickly, you lost the voltage. A good solar cell should have a good pocket, bucket of water with reasonable opening of the, the faucet, which represents the, the current. So you have a voltage, you have a current, and then you plus is a, a factor called fill factor, which is a thermodynamic terms. It depends on how well your solar cell being built. So, so with these three things that a solar cell can determine its efficiency. So for proboscide, it has very good voltage. The voltage loss is very small. And then the current, because as I mentioned earlier, it has very good absorption. So it's, it's, it's a film thing, it's about 300 nanometers, but it produces reasonable amount of current. And then it has a good properties, so we are able to make the solar cell with good fill factor up to about 80%. A tender solar cell, one can think about, you know, you go to London, you can see a double-deck bus. So, very simple, you have a bus is a single uh, layer, you carry certain percent, uh, certain passengers, you double-deck, you carry ideally double the amount of passengers. So, a tender solar cell is using a similar uh, argument that if we have, because a solar cell materials not necessarily cover the whole solar spectrum, you know the sun has emitted light from far infrared to infrared to visible to UV. And it's hard to find one single material pick up all the photons. Even if you have one material pick up all the photons, then your voltage is going to suffer. So the ideal scenario to solve this problem is we choose different material using uh, to pick up different bandwidths of photons. So we choose maybe two materials or three materials to pick up different uh, photons such that just like a double-deck bus, we are able to harvest the light, but not losing the voltage. So currently, the most efficient solar cells are the triple, uh, quadruple 
junction device from, um, from, for space application. So they, are, they have uh, three or four uh, junction tendon solar cells, so they can harvest the light all the way from the uh, mid-infrared to infrared to visible and then to a little bit UV. So if you combine this, these parameters, then one can uh, harvest the, a lot of photons and then produce a very high uh, efficiency. Unfortunately, those devices can only uh, afforded by, by space companies that put satellites in the orbit. So for the general purpose, like uh, residential and uh, um, people like you and me, that would be too expensive. So that's why a tendon solar cell currently we are working on is based on a silicon, which is a mature technology, and then plus a uh, sky That would give us boost the, the efficiency of the silicon device from probably 20%, ideally can reach 30%. Judging by the technology of tendon that you basically, more or less, you would just pay for the silicon because the proboscide is very low cost. Pay for the silicon solar cell, but you enhance the efficiency by 50%, from 20 to 30%, ideally. So one's able to really significantly lower the energy cost by not increase, increasing the, the, the but really uh, enhance the energy efficiency by not increasing the cost too much. So ideally, if this is doable, which our group is working on that, uh, one should be able to see the, the future energy, solar energy cost to dramatically reduce. I should share with you that encourage students to, to, to work in, uh, into the science to, to using the latest uh, state-of-art technology to resolve our in environmental and uh, uh, energy crisis that uh, we need new and young uh, generation people to, to work on the this is not easy task but you know I think it can be it's doable by by the high tech as well as by education and outreach programs